All right, fellas, let's jump into this interview. Okay. Okay, here's the first question. Do you guys find it too bold when a girl shows interest first, or is it a situational thing? So I had a friend at a youth group that I was friends with, and I'd only met her there probably three or four times. But she was really nice. I talked to her quite a bit, and uh, she finally was like, you want to hang out sometime? But that was kind of a green light and, like, the right amount for me, I would say, personally, of, like, assertiveness, like... She wasn't asking me out on a date, but she was showing that she was interested in seeing me besides that youth group. So I'd say that's, that's probably about the right amount in there, where it's not, it's not pushy, there's not a lot of pressure, but also you know whether or not, or you know, you know better where they stand. I think if you're introverted like me also, it very much helps to have two or three pre-planned questions that can be kind of related to what you're doing, so you're at some type of event, it's something similar to that. And they're, they're pre-planned, so you're, you're thinking about them that you can bring up if the conversation you're in uh, gets dry or boring or whatever. And they're not ones like, they kind of have a little more meaning to them, like what's your favorite kind of pizza or, you know, how have you been enjoying the sunshine or something like that. Yeah. Well, so, there's so, nice. So, <laughs> well, there's nice. <laughs> yeah. They don't have to be like some super deep, like soul level question, but something that potentially has... Uh, a chance to grow into a bigger conversation from there instead of just shooting it off it's shooting it in the foot off the bat with like I feel good totally do guys really care if we don't wear makeup to cover up what we're insecure about so there's a level of makeup you shouldn't be wearing no matter how insecure you are if it looks like you used a trial to put it on that's a no go Personally, I would definitely lean towards more natural, maybe a little makeup on your eyes. Um, just a tiny bit of makeup, not like all over your face, which obviously all of us are, have insecurities or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, you get pimples, who cares, cover it up. But once it's a ton, it's over the top and it just looks bad. Well, you have to remember the point of makeup. The point of makeup is to make your face look like it's more perfect than you know naturally can be. So you get a pimple or something, you cover it up, you can put eyeliner on or I don't like eyeliner, so maybe in this case it would be uh, mascara. mascara. Yeah, that kind of emphasizes your eyes, makes your eyes stick out more. And that, that can help draw more attention to your, your face. Right. But when you, when you see someone who has so much makeup on, it's like incredibly obvious they have a ton of makeup on. It's not doing yes. what makeup's supposed to do, which is supposed to make your skin look more perfect. Because it's so obvious it's not your skin. Yeah. Um, I've never seen anybody who looked better with a ton of makeup on that I would assume they would with just a little bit. So even even people that are naturally very good looking, you see them with just layers of makeup on and you kind of think two things to yourself. You think, is this person insecure about something to the point where they have to put this much makeup on? And did they spend an extra hour this morning that could have been working or accomplishing something putting on the makeup? That seems like a waste of time. Uh, do you think men and women can just be friends? It totally depends on the man and the woman. Because I think there are some that can, but I think there are a lot of guys that have feelings for a woman, but um, yeah. for the sake of not jeopardizing their friendship, they won't tell them. And they have this hope in the back of their mind that eventually, once the woman has dated enough guys and got her heart broken enough times, she'll be desperate enough that she'll fall for the guy who's you know been the friend the whole yeah. time. Um, and I think sometimes women pick up on it and it's like this subtle pressure that can make them uncomfortable or, or can mess up your friendship. I think you should try to prioritize being honest about how you feel over a friendship that you want to stay together. Because if it's not an honest friendship anyways, then what's the point? If you're just, you know, friends where they're kind of in your friend group, I think then it's very possible. Oh, yeah. But I think if your best friend is the opposite gender, similar age, both of you single, I think it's there's a lot higher chance for one person to have the feeling feelings for the other. Not even both you single. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not even <laughs> in which single. case, like <laughs> that's that's not good. But uh, yeah, in which case, the chances of one having feelings for the other are a lot higher. I think you're a hundred percent right. I think that is absolutely true. Most of the time, um, the large majority of the cases, I think, yeah, it's possible, but most of the time. Um, either party, probably most of the time the guy is hoping in the back of his head when he's clearly in the friend zone, one day she'll realize I've been the guy that has just been her friend forever. And I think that that's uh, 
kind of his hope. And in which case, it's better for the girl just to say, "Sorry, dude, like, <laughs> you know, this isn't this isn't happening." No, I think there are cases where guys and girls can just be friends. I don't think it's yeah super common. All right, so what are some good questions you should ask on a first date? Well, uh, one of these things would be, "Where do you see yourself in three years? Where do you see yourself in five years?" So when I turned fourteen and became a dating age, uh, I was very introverted and not particularly talkative. So what I did, because I had a hard time keeping conversations going, is I drew up a very long list. I mean, my list is right here. Uh, it's a very long list. All questions I came up with that I wanted to ask. And whenever I think of a good question, or even hear of a good question, I just write it down. And so it, it gives you, um, like bef before you go on a date, before you're gonna hang out, whatever, you can look through it and really get a good reference of questions that you wanna ask and stuff you wanna know. So like one of them would be, are you a Christian? What does that mean? Because everybody nowadays says they're a Christian, right? Like almost everybody. But um, it's, it means something different to everybody. Right. And another thing would be like, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Do you like to travel? Like, you know, do you want to travel with your significant other? What if uh, that's like a dream of yours and I hate traveling? Yeah. Like obviously that's not going to work too good. Right. And a lot, another thing would be, are you more, would you see yourself in the future being more, would you get a lot of this from asking them, hey, what's, what do you see yourself in 10 years? Are you more, would you say career mindseted and focused on being more career oriented or more homemaking family oriented? Because mm -hmm. that's going to give you a lot of the idea of whether this person is going to live a similar lifestyle to you. Yeah. And, and maybe another question would be, how would you live your life if you didn't get married? Uh, what would you do for money? Uh, what would you do for fun? What would your week to week life look like? And would you, maybe would you be happy? Could you be happy not being married? That's, yeah. You know. Totally. Another thing, this is not, this is obviously a question I feel like everybody's going to think to ask, but it's what are your interests? What are your hobbies? You learn a lot about somebody by their hobbies. Oh, a good question is on a scale of one to 10, how content are you with where you're at in life right now? Say if they say a really low number, okay, that leads you to way more questions about, oh, what would make you more content? Say, you know, you cannot be con content in your singleness, you cannot be content in your relationship with God, you cannot be content physically. Um, ask him what his 10-year business plan is. <laughs> what about some God stuff, guys? That make this a little more spiritual. Okay. A really good God question is, here's a really good God question. What are you excited to learn from God this year? Oh, that's really good. Like, like oh, in the Bible, yeah. or a lesson, or, yeah. uh, you know, some, you know, people have, theology. Um, some piece of theology, or some piece of, yeah. uh, something that really speaks to them, that they'll spend years learning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's that's something that you're hoping to learn this year, or to get better at, an area of uh, life, religion, whatever? A good follow-up question to that is, what is the biggest thing God has taught you in the past year? If you could pick one thing that is the biggest thing, because I feel like, in the span of a year, God's had time to really hammer some specific point home. And also that'll give you a good idea. Do they actually think about it? Um, how would you live your life if you knew you only have five years left to live? Okay, next question. What's something that stands out to you when looking for a wife? All right. One really thing that stands out is confidence. And it's, I mean, not an easy thing. It's something everybody can work on and constantly be growing. Confidence, not arrogance or like really prideful but confidence being confident in who you are uh, I would say two things that are gonna help confidence are reading your Bible will definitely help your confidence because you're gonna get a better view of who you are in relationship to God and then the other thing I would say is uh, working out or exercising or yes. playing a sport or something like that absolutely um, along with achieving goals say your goal is to lose 10 pounds or gain X amount of muscle or whatever Lift um, a certain amount of weight. Lift a certain amount of weight. Yeah, all those. I feel like those are goals that not only do you see the goal get accomplished, but you see the the changes you want to see yeah, to exactly. accomplish that goal. Okay. A big confidence booster is having interests and having interests that you're good at. If I'm a, somebody that has nothing I really like to do and I have nothing that I know, yeah, I'm pretty good at this or I'm working at being really good at this, then you're not going to be as confident. If I know there's something I am passionate about that I'm good at, you're passionate about it, so it means something to you, and when you're good at it, you know, you'll get better at it the more passionate you are about it, and the more you work on it. So having having interests in hobbies is a massive way to build confidence, I think. What are some things girls can do that make themselves seem more attractive? 
a huge thing that makes you more attractive is being intentional in a relationship, being intentional in even just a conversation. If you can't have a conversation that's intentional and has a shared interest in the other person, it instantly takes a lot of attractiveness away because it's like, oh, this person doesn't really care. If you're responding, yeah, no, you know, maybe, and they're, they're all only, the only one asking questions, huge, like, a like, huge red flag. If you're not, if you can't ask questions, instantly, like, brings you down multiple notches. If you can have a good conversation, solid conversation, that's more important than whether you're naturally really good looking or not. I would say that makes a way bigger difference if I talk to you and our first conversation is really good, instantly view, I instantly view you as more attractive. Regardless of what you look like, you now look more attractive. I find very attractive also in girls is when they have stuff that they're they're excited about, stuff they're learning, uh, say, say it's a, a new Bible study they're going to, a new job they're at, uh, something they're studying, just something that they're excited about and that's uh, that's you know making their life more upbeat is a very it's a very interesting thing to talk about. It's really good when you see a girl that's maybe uh, like 25 and older. You look at her and she's already preparing and taking action on preparing for if the one never comes. But when you see a girl that's 25, 27, you know maybe 30, and she still is just planning on the one. Um, you know, he, oh, he's, I'm going to get married, you know, eventually. And she hasn't taken any action on what if that never happens, then that is kind of a sad thing because it's like you're fully relying on basically this guy this that you've never met before to actually complete your life or um, continue your life. And I think it's really... Or start your life, really. Or your plans for your life are really run over because of the fact that you were assuming that yes. he would be there when you were 20, you were assuming he'd be there when you're 25 and he's still not, and when you eventually get married at 30, you're like, well, look at this. I could have all these these things I could contribute to the relationship that I'm no, not able to because I was just constantly waiting for Prince Charming to come along. But here's on, on the flip side of that, some things, some things that girls do that's very unattractive. One of it would be lack of honesty. When you meet someone and they, they want to tell you all about how their life is and then you discover that that is not how their life is at all, that is a major turnoff, I think, for pretty much all guys. It's because yeah. I feel like something that's very hard to do nowadays is to be completely honest in a relationship and you uh, put a bigger emphasis and a higher level of importance on honesty than on that relationship. Right. Um, being genuine and being real and not trying to play some facade. If you're trying to put on this facade every time you know, you're talking to this person or whatever, th that person's going to figure it out and it's going to be normally it's pretty clear. And that's a massive turn off. If your life sucks, do something to fix it and make it better. Make it more interesting. Don't try to pretend like it is because everybody's going to be able to see it sooner or later and it's going to make you look dumb. So, and you know, uninteresting and unattractive. Something that instantly makes you not attractive or less attractive is if you're a flirt. If you flirt with lots of guys. If you're flirting with like every guy, one, it doesn't make you feel special at all that you're flirting and it shows you're not good quality. Um, yeah, not wifey material. Okay, okay. gentlemen, do you guys have any final points you really want to bring home. Yeah, final points are be genuine, ask good questions, have hobbies, if things you're interested in. If you don't have any right now, find some. Um, and then don't wear mom jeans. I thought you stole it there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, be honest. I would, yeah, be, be intentional with relationships. Um, and try to find stuff that you're excited about. Stuff that, you know, brings life. Like, you know, people have a life and then people are just, like, excited for life. Yeah. And those are the best pe type of people to be around because you're you're excited then from being around them to improve your life. Um, right. That's good. I would say focus on trying to, trying to be someone like that. All right. Well, thank you very much, guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, thanks for watching, ladies. Maybe we'll do a part two, depending on how this is received. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Sorry, maybe guys. you'll never see them again. <laughs> <laughs> We're probably gonna, yeah. We'll see how many people we offended. Bye bye! Daniel, you can be like single. <laughs>